today the chapter 4 the making of global world when we talk about the word globalization or when we talk about the making of the world around we always think that globalization is connected with economic systems globalization is the growth of the financial system in the past 50 years but in this unit we are going to study the various factors which are being present along with the change of the economic system in the modern era so before the modern period pre-modern period what are the major contributors for the development of modernization and in this chapter especially we focus deliberately and precisely on the history of trade how did the trade has contributed its efforts to make the world to become a global village then we think about the history of migration when did the actual migration start or what was the major purpose or the reasons which forced the people to get migrated then we shall discuss about the search of work what made the people to search about work what are the factors that contributed the people to lose their work and brought them down to a condition where they have to search work and later on we move on to the movement of the capital how did the history tell us the initial stages of moving of the capital and what are the factors that motivated the business people the trade people to do large trades and how are they well connected with each other how they used to carry the huge amounts from one region to other region how they started the trade initially how it got expanded later how the well connectedness and change of technology has brought very sufficient necessary equipment for the people to do large trade and we also try to stress on the global interconnectedness how did the world become globally interconnected towards it so all these factors are also focusing for globalization other than this we also have certain other factors from the age old times or from the ancient times in the ancient times we have the people like travelers traders priests and the pilgrims who traveled from one corner of the world to the other corner for example we have megasthenes traveling from china persia across and coming to india who studied about the indian conditions and he went on to the indonesian lands so like that we have travelers who have traveled across the continents so as the travelers in the ancient period they were the sources of knowledge actually because they traveled from one continent to the other continent or it would be rather right to say that from one kingdom to another kingdom when the kingdoms they have passed across and they have collected the evidences and they have recorded the evidences in their books that have played a vital role so along with their journey they also brought for us the social information about the kingdoms which is not known for many of the people in the present day those were being the sources for us to learn about the history and we also have priests and pilgrims contributing a large for the historical combinations and interconnections between one kingdom to the other kingdom are established because of the large people moving from one kingdom to another kingdom either by the host of the priests or to go on a pilgrimage and the vast distances brought us lot of knowledge in the fields of money values then the skills the ideas how was the money used in a particular kingdom how it is used in our kingdom so we can compare it when we have the knowledge of the other kingdoms currencies and all these things when it comes to the values for example let us take india and saudi arabia india is a secular state saudi arabia is run by islamic law so we can compare what are the values that are valid there what are the values that are not valid here what are the values that are valid here and what are not practiced there so this compared to study also can be done when you have the thorough knowledge of two different kingdoms in the same way we have the different skills people of persia people of the roman people are having well sculptured people greco buddhist art the people have traveled from greece to india to establish the greco buddhist art because there were people who brought the information for us so skill also got passed from one region to another region we have the great buddha statues which are just like the greco greek 
sculptures which we have during that time and then we have the ideas the earlier ideas the present ideas the construction of the new models the islamic architecture all these things are the transformation of the ideas from that kingdom to this kingdom and we also have inventions the modern technology getting inventions so leaving aside all the positive aspects we also have some negative implications because of the passage of people from one area to the other area or one kingdom to the other kingdom that is the germs yes you heard the word right germs not germs germs the disease causing insects or animals initially in india we don't have any diseases or in china we don't have much diseases but the people those who got migrated from europe towards the east were having certain diseases later on that spread to the diseases or people in india or in the other countries which was also spreading the dreadful diseases like plague smallpox all these diseases are also the adding advantages when the people got transformed from one region to another region so when we study about the transformation or the globalization we just generally stress only on financial matters only on the growth of the economies but we most of the times neglect the important contributors of history those people are the trade the migration the search of work factors the moment of the capital global interconnectedness which is existing from the ancient times to the modern times and we also have the ancient times travelers trade priests and pilgrims vast distances traveled by those people has not only fetches knowledge money values skills and ideas but also the germs diseases which we were not aware of any such kind till that moment and by 13th century this has become an unmistakable link where you can have a good connectivity between the west to the modern east or between the modern west to the present existing east so this has established a fantastic linkage from the western part of the world to the modern eastern part of the world where we have good transformation of the ideas it may be in the form of values knowledge ideas germs diseases whatever it may be but the link has established certain relations between the people it may be a trade link it may be a migration link it may be the people of search of work or intended labor whatever it is but it has brought a new outlook of global interconnectedness and the globalization so that we are going to discuss in detail step by step in this unit silk routes the silk routes link the world how did the silk routes got established and how did the process of the routes have connected one corner of the world to the other corners as in the introduction of the lesson we have discussed that it's not only the trade it's not only the migration concept that have brought together everything or it's not only the financial matters that have brought the global interconnectedness it is a root network which has also connected the people from europe to asia so let us try to find out what are the different products that brought people together let us see here the west bound china so in the western part of china we have the boundary where china used to sell or send her silk cargoes means the silk carrying large ships along this route that's the reason why it is famous all across the world that it is a silk route link to the world from china it started to move to all corners of europe so initially as it is the most significant factor that silk is being exported from this region to other corners via through this route that is the reason why it has been clearly specified as it is a silk route but it's not mentioned that only silk is been carried through this route if you study in detail if you go into the details of this one we can understand that there are several silk routes identified by the historians either by land or by sea so it can be either by waterways or by landways so it's not only that only through waterways the people have transported the silk and silk has been the major positive end to export from the asian countries 
but not only silk there are other products which are connecting the vast asia europe and northern africa is the silk trade but the silk trade can also be called as pottery trade textiles trade spices trade and in return from europe we got gold silver all the precious metals getting flowing back so when from this side when we are exporting the silk when we are exporting the textiles when we are exporting the spices from india and southeast asia we also got in return from the europe the gold the silver the diamonds and all these things so this all has been an interconnected trade relations so we may get it out from which century do we actually have this trade relations the exact date cannot be found out by the historians till now because the connectedness has been traced from asia to europe and via through north africa is from christian era before it means prior to the christian era before the christian era has been discussed before the good olden days we have the connectivity till the 15th century bc we have the existence of trade relations between the different corners of asia europe and northern africa and we already just now learned that it's not only the silk that has been exported through this route or it's not only the sea route that has been used by the people they used to use land route wherever there is possibility and when there is no possibility of using land route they used to shift to the sea route and the other products what they used to export are the pottery the pots the beautiful pots which are well engraved on their pot the colors the pictures everything which was sent to greece and babylon and we also have spices and the textiles from india and southeast asia also and we also have not only the trade relations only regarding this parts from this side but from the other side also we have the trade relations established because in return when these people used to take these products to there there they are being paid back with gold and silver and all the precious metals towards the east from west we used to get the valuable metals towards the east and it's not only the metals it's not only the trade the link has been established the same route has been used by the christian missionaries to come towards asia in order to spread the religion which was actually used by the muslim preachers before when they came first and it's not only the christianity or the islam community people but buddhism has been spread from india to other corners of asia via through this route only so the silk route is not just the route which has been used only for silk trade it is famous because the silk cargoes are been sent through this route via this route but it's not only the silk it is textiles it is spices it is pottery that has been traded from this part and from the other part we used to get the most precious metals like gold and silver and other metals which are been inter exchange and there was a good significant flow and this relation of trade relations were not only confined to sea routes but they are also connected with land routes wherever there is a possibility there and not the sea routes and looking at the situations when was this actual links established it is traced that these actual links are been established prior to the christian era to the modern 15th century bce so it is that link has been a very old link between the asia this europe and the northern part of africa and it's not only used to have trade relations it was also used to for spread of the religion first the buddhism which has gone from india to other corners of asia today in india the number of people who follow buddhism may be very less but the motherland for buddhism is india and today it has been spread to all countries of asia and in the same way the islam community and the christianity first the islam preachers have come from europe or the western part of asia via through the silk route to india to china and they have spread their religion in the other corners of asia and in the same way the christian people from europe who initially came missionaries to spread the word of god were also have started their journey 
from via through the silk route only so this is a significant factor which we need to remember that the silk route is a name of a route because most of the cargo ships which carry silk have to used or were being used this route but it's not only the silk we have pottery we have other precious metals getting in flow via this side and that side and it's not only for trade it is for the spread of the word of the god the religious prosperity the spreading of buddhism islam and christianity were also connected with this silk route the foot travels as we have discussed till now the silk route not only trade the food habits what we have today also are being crossing from one continent to the other continent it would be very astonishing for us to know some of the foods which we call it with different names are being traditionally branded with the country's name but actually they do not belong to that particular country let us see here example pasta pasta is a name which we generally get associated with italy but actually pasta has been initially been used or carried away to italy by the arab traders when in the way old and days so in the ancient period we have arabs using pasta arab traders took this one to sicily which is a modern day part of italy so pasta has been associated with italy and then noodles which we all know noodles here in india and in china from china it went to the west and it has become spaghetti so now we feel that western people have introduced for us noodles western people are introducing for us pasta so like that we have different habits what we feel like generally they are from the west but actually they have traveled from some other place to there and where the, from there they got branded to themselves in the same way with various other similar food habits in india and in japan we have the common food habits because people have migrated there the travelers have passed from one area to another areas where these people have carried certain knowledge certain crops certain fruits and they have passed it on to another regions in the same way let us now find out the actual what happened see here the food traveling example they used to go for long distances cultural exchange so because of the long distances trade or traveling by the priests by the people those who want to do scholars studies pilgrimages all these people crossed various kingdoms while they were crossing various kingdoms what they have felt it's a spectacular thing that has made them to come towards this ideology that has brought them the idea of understanding all these things that has given the boom for the people to have idea about this one that has made the people to transform that knowledge to this said either by writing in the books or by carrying the fruits or by taking that particular crop to some other region so the passage of the information has been done so it shows for us that in the pre modern days also we have the interconnected means between one region to the other region by different other sources it may be by silk trade it may be by food trade or it may be by the people moving from one region to another region the pilgrimages or the priests now as we move on they have traveled for very long distances so that made them to carry certain foods with them and these travelers and traders have brought the new crops from one region to another region that has brought the knowledge for them and not only the new crops the ready food stuff because we all know when we are traveling we would like to carry certain amount of home food along with us suppose you are traveling for a long journeys we prefer to have the tamarind rice or the chapatis which are you feel comfortable with that that you would like to have with you in the same way the ready food stuff was also carried from one region to another region the example of arabs carrying pasta is also one of such kind of example and the common foods which are found in almost all the regions are the potatoes the soya the groundnut the maize the tomatoes chilies sweet potatoes and so on these all are being carried away because of the people getting migrated from one region to another region even in america the continent which was been discovered by christopher columbus 
where it was initially been inhabited by the american indians so the food what they used to consume has become the basic food in america because the basic people are american indians so in this way the food have passed from one place to another places the commonalities of food was also found at various corners of the world because the common people living at different different corners and we also find the life and death question because of food generally you may get it out how can a food be a life and death matter for people yes life and death has been a part of the food items because poor people in ireland started to eat better when they initially got the crop of potatoes potatoes according to them were at very less cost available at very cheap cost because they used to have meat which is being exported from austria australia to these places so when australia people have to export it to these people as it is a perishable good it has become very difficult and very costly for them where a common people cannot afford for that so with the invention of the refrigerated boats and ships then only the possibility of carrying meat has become an easy task but by the discovery of that one the cost of sending it has become costly again where common people cannot reach to that extent so potatoes has been surfacing the scarcity of the food during that period so the potatoes ireland people are well connected with the potatoes and they were happily having the food bread with potatoes but as the time passed on there was a time when the potato crop has been affected with a dreadful disease so the entire crop got destroyed and by 1840s the people those who are habituated of having potatoes and lack of money to buy the meat there is no food available for them many thousands of people lost their lives out of starvation this has forced them to come to that kind of situations these all are the serious effects which have affected them on a very larger scale so life and death are also well connected with food food sometimes gives life for people when they are hungry but if the same food is not available for us that leads to star- starvation where thousands and hundreds of thousands of people have died out of starvation these all have added extra efforts for them so we need to remember all these facts yes they are painful facts but we need to remember all these facts so food travel food also traveled from one region to another region so it is not the food that has been traveled it is the people those who traveled from one region to another region have carried the food along with them and introduced the food for them and made the habit of people to have that food in that particular region though it is new but it, they have adopted that one to their culture and made a part and parcel of their culture the example we have pasta which was taken by the arab traders to the italian countries today in italy the most famous one is pasta in the same way when we talk about noodles generally we get to a assumption that noodles are introduced by the west but in actual terms noodles went to west from china means from the east so like this there are many foods which have traveled from east to west so it is also reveals for us that there is a good connectivity global interconnectedness prior to the modern era in the pre modern era also that's the key point which we need to remember here let us now focus on the conquest diseases and trade we already have focused light on what that have connected the people from the ancient period to the modern period yes the branding may be changed as globalization but global interconnectedness was present pre in the pre modern period also now as we also discussed about the food stuff and everything how it got transformed into the various stages how the names have changed but the same common food is found at various corners of the world now moving on to the other important aspect is that conquest how did the world became the issue or a race for conquering the other countries or how did the colonialism has been widespread so far that is the basic point which we are going to discuss in this segment so the world shrank greatly after the 
discovery of sea route to Asia has been found. In 1493, after Vasco de Gama discovered the first sea route to India that have opened the doors for the people of Europeans to step towards Africa and Asia. Because till that time, they were traveling through the land route. Yes, the route existed during that time also. But when the land route has been blocked by the Ottoman Empire people, Turkey, Constantinople, later they need to find out some alternative to get connected with the East. As we discussed that, the discovery of sea route to India has enabled India or Asia to get well connected with the European countries. And all the European countries are in great need of colonies. This is what something which made them to get attracted towards Asia and Africa. While Vasco de Gama was connecting India via through the sea route, he made a route which is connecting through Cape of Good Hope, the last tip of Africa and then to India. So when he came through that way, it made it very clear for all the others that we can connect Africa and India with Europe. Till now they are connected only with the northern part of Africa. That too because of the great existence of Sahara Desert for 10.5 million square kilometers which restricted the entry of people towards the south of Africa. So now the Europeans got an edge over that to move on to south of Africa via through the very easiest way through Atlantic Ocean and then coming into Indian Ocean and entering into India. So Asia and Africa got well connected with the first discovery of sea route. That is the reason why it is rightly remarked that world shrank greatly. The entire movement got completely changed with the discovery of sea route to India or Asia in particular. Then when we took on to the other issues like Indian Ocean has been always very busy with the trade like goods, people, knowledge and customs. As the time passed on, now the trade has going to be very large. Initially, the trade was only between North of Africa and some countries of Asia. But now, it is going to be well connected with all the countries in Asia and South Africa or Southern part of Africa and Southern part of Asia as well. So, not only this, America was newly discovered which is also add an advantage because when the America was discovered by Christopher Columbus, when Christopher Columbus discovered about America, America discovery has given a wide range of scope because we got the abundant land, the new varieties of crops, the minerals, which gave a scope for large number of countries to come and occupy them. And as the availability of land is more, the number of people are very less. Most of the people who are living in America are the people those who have got migrated from European countries or they were picked up as slaves from Africa. So that has given a trade and lives for the people in America. The other major interesting point what we have is America not only had this and today America we call as United States of America. But Christopher Columbus discovered America which is a very large continent comprising of North American continent. So according to him, America means Canada, USA, Mexico and countries like Peru, all the Caribbean islands together he called it as America. So the minerals, the metals which are available in Peru and Mexico were also gathered by the European countries and they actually worked as an input for the countries to occupy the countries in Asia. So European countries need funds. The funds are being supported by the minerals and metals which are available in America, especially in the countries like Peru and Mexico. So these countries started to make the European countries to become rich, wealthy. Then automatically they started to buy the latest equipment, weapons, boats, army and start to attack the other colonial countries in Asia and Africa. So their kingdom of colonial empire started to flourish and become larger and larger because of the support what they are getting from Peru and Mexico lands. And America has been a source for the slaves. They started need slaves because they need to do agriculture. There the basic European people do not have much stamina to work hard because they do not get much exposed to sunlight. When it comes to Africans, 
Africans basically are thick skinned people because they experience heavy amount of sun sun rays their skin is completely dark toned and even their hair gets curled up because of the extreme heat what they do so that nature of the africans makes them to do lot of hard work that inherits the capacity for them to do lot of hard work which is required for the americans to do in their crops and fields that is a basic reason why americans are very much interested to have slaves from african countries then moving on to the other point what we have the legends of south america especially those who have heard about the fabulous city the city of enormous wealth that is none other than the city in south america that is el dorado el dorado has been fabled of city of gold so people started to move in search of gold to that particular city to identify the city and to uh, do the mining to acquire gold from there that's how people started to move towards south america also so north america and south america are being occupied by people and then we have spanish conquerors who are very clever and extraordinary people why did i use the words like very clever and extraordinary people because spanish people are able to control brazil for more than 100 years and it is very easy for them actually because they never used to fight with guns or weapons why not guns and weapons because if you carry guns that can be identified by the people local people they may understand that you are coming into their kingdom to occupy the kingdom but the spanish people used to carry not the weapons but the germs with them yes what you heard is right the germs the diseases so spanish people used to carry the germs like smallpox and smallpox has been a deadly killer there is no medicine for smallpox so the long installation and lack of humanity the basic people of americans are the people those who got migrated from europe as i told you just now so these people do not get exposed to much to sunlight so they do not have much of the immunity power so when it comes to the spanish people introducing the disease of smallpox because of the lack of immunity these people are becoming weak and killing themselves or they are being killed because of the dreadful disease because of this dreadful disease the most capable people are being killed or banished away from the place obviously it becomes very easy for the conqueror to co- occupy that place that's what it rightly mentioned by the writer john withrow who mentioned that blessings for the colonist smallpox has been a blessing for the colonist by the god by clearing the lands and making it possible for them to occupy the lands these all possibilities made the spanish people to expand their colonial kingdom to various corners of the world this is how they used to do the biological warfare even today we are scared to listen the word like biological warfare where people do not fight or countries do not fight with military with arms with nuclear weapons but they just simply introduced a chemical or a germ into the community which later on get passes through the other people and later on it becomes a deadly disease in the country which automatically ruins the economy which automatically ruins the people's living standard there that's what the spanish people have done wave back and they have targeted the colonies and they were very successful in achieving their targets this is a very difficult point to accept but it is a fact which we need to understand that and as we move on other than that the countries like china and india are considered to be the richest countries during that period up to 18th century so that the fundamental point which made the european countries to find out the sea routes to india to find out all other possibilities to reach to india and asia because china and india are the filthy rich countries till that time and china has been restricting the overseas trade doing very limited trade which also made the possibility of lack of income for the people in the west so they need the other possible opportunities for them to get involved in that and to fight and get their freedom of trade so once we get trade we can flourish this is the underlying concept between them and to explore the richness to web gold metals and all these things from india and in china that made the other countries to fall on 
a fray towards India or towards Asia. Let us look at some of the key points which are in Europe. If you take guns and move on, it is very easy for the enemies to identify it and they would like to destroy it. But if a disease is taken with some people who are diseased, we cannot identify what is the actual problem. And by the time you identify that one, the entire country would be in trouble, which automatically cleans off the most capable person and makes it easy for the conquerors to occupy the lands. The next most interesting fact in Europe is that poverty and hunger are in Europe till the later part of the 19th century. And not only this, they also have the deadly diseases widespread and religious conflicts. So 18th century has also brought the new concept of slaves from Africa. As I told you before, we need a strong people who can do hard work and withstand with the hot sun which is not possible for the Europeans nor for the Americans because Europeans are the people those who got migrated to America also. So it's not possible for neither for the Europeans nor for the Americans to do a lot of hard work by withstanding in the hot sun and working in the large fields. So the best possible alternative for them is to explore the slaves, bring the African thick skinned people who can do a lot of hard work even in the withstanding hot sun. So get them brand them as slaves and force them to work for a long period and earn huge and huge profits. This is the possible alternative what the Europeans and the Americans thought during that time. And by 18th and 19th centuries, they were able to capture many of the slaves from Africa and put them into the agricultural field works and started to produce cotton and sugar in very large scale market. So that's how the changes have been occurred and the conquests, the diseases and the trades. This is a brief recap. Let's have a brief look at the points now. World has been shook off when the new discovery of sea route, the news has spread to the entire Europeans. They always tried to explore the countries in Asia and Africa as soon as possible. The reason for that, as I told you before, China and India are branded as the richest countries till the 18th century. So possible to get all the wealth and explore all of them and occupy the countries and try to squeeze their wealth. The possibilities of the Europeans were always to gather the wealth. And next, Indian Ocean has been always bustling with the trades of goods, people, knowledge and customs. As the time passed on, with the discovery of America, abundant land and crop minerals, which made the people to explore towards America, and at the same time, possibility of the trade of the people, for making them to move towards America, picking up the people from Africa and sending them to America. And the precious metals which are available in Peru and Mexico, which financed the countries of Europe during that time, because they need huge investments in order to go for a long voyage towards the east. That fund has been raised from the precious stones and metals which they were able to collect from Peru and Mexico. That's how the European countries got much benefited from the new discovered land, America. And then the legends were in the race to find out the most fabulous city of gold that is El Dorado in South America, which also made the possibility of exploring South America and later on occupying South American countries. So that's how the colonial system expanded to a very larger scale. And the concept of diseases enters here. Spanish kings or the conquerors, instead of carrying guns, metals, weapons and everything, they used to carry the diseased people who are filled with germs. And they introduced the smallpox disease to the place where they need to occupy that one. And this has been a very dreadly disease. And the people not having any proper idea how to save themselves from the smallpox. And there is anyway no possible medicine available to them at that time. So thousands of people used to disappear because of this dreadly disease. Automatically the land would be cleared. It becomes very easy for the conquerors to occupy that particular land. Target will be fulfilled. That is the reason why John Withrup has rightly explained that Smallpox has been the blessings for the colonists and it's a path of the way which has been given by the God himself by clearing the places 
and making the people to be the number in less. And the next, why did the people move towards India and China? Because in Europe, we have poverty and hunger. In order to solve these problems, they need to find out and acquire more wealth. And they are already struggling with deadly diseases and with religious conflicts. So, they need to find out some countries which are filthy rich to solve their economic crisis or problems or poverty and hunger. That's how they have searched for countries like Africa, India and China, which already gave an alternative for them to do hard work in America by the people of Africa, Africa known as slaves. So that's the momentum which have generated the slave trade during that time, automatically the metal trade, minerals trade, gold trade and other products trade by occupying them colonies, conquest, spread of the diseases to various corners of the world. All these things are being interlinked with the main concept of trade. And by the end of the 18th century, cotton and sugar are being produced for the European markets by the African slaves, by the European countries. That's what have been a fabulous change of trade from the initial stages to the modernness. Now, understanding like the most dangerous side of colonization, the colonial systems, that is the cattle plague, the gift given by the British colonial masters to their countries which they occupied, especially to the African countries is the plague, the cattle plague. Let us now learn about Africa first of all, why the people in Africa do not show much interest to work to wages. See Africa is basically a very large continent and the population living in Africa is relatively very less. So as the time passed on, people started to have large lands with less number of owners and large cattle also. So they used to have huge amount of cattle with them and lands with them. So automatically even if you are in Africa, why would you like to work when you have land as well as cattle to what you have necessary for you? So as the situations change, the Britishers came to Africa in their process of colonization. When they started to make the colonies, they started to occupy some of the countries in Africa where they find it really very difficult to find a person who works for labor. As I told you just now, the backdrop of Africans, though they look dark skinned, but they have large lands under their names and large livelihood for them. So whatever they need, they can get whatever they want, they can cultivate. So there is no chance or there is no necessity for them to do a lot of hard work or work for wages under somebody else. So this made the Britishers to think again. As the time passed, the situations changed. The Europeans are attracted towards Africa to they want to colonize Africa because they got some information that here in Africa we have large amount of land available and minerals available, especially gold and some costly stones like diamonds. So they want something else in larger scale. So they came to Africa to explore Africa because most of the people don't know how to step into Africa. So finally they have sent explorers, they have sent missions to come to Africa and finally they were on their path to reach the final destination. After they reached the final path, now they find the practical problem is that Africans, none of them are ready or interested to work. The problem is they don't like to work because they already have everything whatever they need. So now how did the Britishers force the people to work? So this is the other side of colonization, especially when it regards to Africa. As the time passed on, the employers used many methods. They used to lend some money for them. They used to give at very high rate of interest. They used to force them. They used to make it mandatory for the people to work in order to have certain rights. So like that, initially they brought some people into the work. And after they brought them into the work, they made it mandatory and they say confined only to that particular work area. 24 hours they have to stay there only. They should not leave that area without the permission. And the permissions are not given at all. Once in a while in a year they may give the permission, ask them to leave outside because 
the britishers are afraid that these people may leave away the place and go back and it is very difficult for them to get the replacement of the work so like this the situations have changed and the constitution or according to their rules they used to follow literally they want people to work at very less wages or no wages that is the only law only constitution what they know they don't want any other benefits to be done to the countries which they are occupying so the mine workers are specially brought under the mines and a compound wall was built and in this compound wall only they have to work for a large time or almost the entire day they have to stay there only and they were not at all allowed to move freely by 1880s as i told you the name of the lesson that is the topic that is the cattle plague or the rinder pest this has come to africa in 1890s then how did it come to africa as i told you the backdrop of africa the people are capable of holding lands and had large amount of livelihood stock with them so in order to feed the british soldiers the italians who are staying in eritrea that is in the southeastern part of africa those people need some food so as i told you before the europeans are have having the habit of having meat with them so lot of stock of live animals has been sent to the people of italian soldiers under the british rule in eritrea so in order to provide food for the soldiers in the eritrea region the ship has flown all along the cross of africa and reached the region after 5 years so while it reached after 5 years 90% of the animals which are in the boat or the ship were dead so this 90% of the animals dead bodies were in the same boat where it has given rise for the plague so that's how the plague has entered into the people of africa through the britishers that's the gift given by the colonial masters to them so this is the process how plague has stepped into africa if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus